Hey, what's up guys? It's Urbad for you. I'm again back with a new video for the Rising. With the new Secrets of Gloomrat update, we get a lot of new V-Blood bosses in the game. In this video, we're going to cover every single one of them so you know where to hunt for them, which blueprints or weapons they unlock, and of course, how you can make progression to the next biomes a lot easier to basically get ready for the end game. Without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, so here we are on the preview server of Secrets of Gloomrot. Once again, Stellock Studios, a big thanks for giving me the chance to check out the new update early. We don't have a lot of time, though, as the server could go down any moment. During the preview, we took down all three shard bearers. Solaris isn't a shard bearer anymore, slightly changes the endgame quest. But let's start off with Act 1. So the very first one is the Alpha Wolf. It still unlocks the wolf form, which is even better right now. You should definitely check out my video in the the top right of the screen if you want to know more about it but you basically get some extra abilities when you use it but just like with the previous update it feels like this one doesn't have a fixed location so your best bet would be to search for these wolf dens also stick close to the roads pretty central in the area south of the forgotten cemetery basically as this is where i found him most of the times if you have trouble tracking him down though, you can easily press track blood right now in this menu. And that is basically it. You don't have to visit an altar to do so. You can do this for every boss if you don't find them right off the bat. Now going back to the menu, you can see that we're still tracking the alpha wolf. So we're gonna stop that. On level 20, we have Errol the Stonebreaker. And this one also unlocks the aftershock like in the previous update, as well as the copper weapons. If we open up the map, this one can be found inside the bandit copper mine, which is pretty central on the map. On level 20, we also have Gilly the Frost Archer, which once again unlocks the Frostbat ability. The tanning rack as structure for your base, the leather blueprint, as well as the traveler's wrap, night stalker vestment, and also the empty water skins. She can be found in the Bandit Trapper Camp, right next to the Vampire Waygate in the northeastern part of the map. Then we also have Rufus, the foreman, and this guy unlocks the Blood Rage ability, the woodworking bench, the big stash, so you can store more items in your beginner base, as well as the fishing pole and crossbow, so then you can start crafting ranged weapons. Rufus is located at the Bandit Logging Camp, which is a little bit north of the Cave Passage to the east. I already covered all Cave Passage teleports, by the way, in a video in the top right of the screen, if you're interested in that. But let's move on to the next bosses. On level 27, we have Grayson the Armorer, and this guy unlocks the Phantom Aegis spell, which I absolutely love using for both single player and co-op, as it's super useful in many situations. The grinder, so you can start grinding bones for grave dust. The workshop floors, make your base more efficient, assortment of statues, and also the whetstone, which you're going to need a lot for crafting. Grayson the Armorer can be found in the Bandit Armory, which is slightly to the northwest in the Farbane Woods. Right above the Vampire Waygate to the northwest, or at the F of Farbane Woods, basically. Then we also have Gorswine the Ravager. This one unlocks the Bone Explosion ability, as well as the Tomb Structure and the Nocturne Fences. Then we also get the Grave Dust Blueprint, so you can start making this one with the grinder, skeletons, so you can summon them at your base to make even more bones, ghouls, and also the Grave Digger Ring. I'm almost certain he is also roaming around a little bit between the infested graveyard and the desecrated graveyard, so you want to keep an eye on this road in the south. Moving on to level 30, we first have the Putrid Rat, which has become a lot more powerful with this update. Definitely get your hands on the red form as quick as possible, because right now it's a fantastic ability which you can use to go fully rogue or stealth in the game. It's also not possible to track down this V-Blood target. You basically have to summon it with the Vermin Nest. Three Grave Dust and one Unsullied Heart, so it's a lot easier to do that right now. We'll make sure that the Putrid Red will pop up in your base. Prepare yourselves for it, because this is a nasty creature. Anyways, let's move on to Lydia, the Chaos Archer. She unlocks the Chaos Valley. Awesome ability for ranged. Also, the Devourer as structure, so you can destroy items you don't need. The Leather Working Station, with which you can craft a new bag, so you can store even more items in your inventory. While, of course, she also gives you the small bag blueprint. 
she also seems to be roaming around on the map, sometimes even fighting the alpha wolf. So just have a look at the central part of the map, track her down, you will probably find her in no time. Moving on to level 35, we first have Nikolaus the Fallen. This guy unlocks the Corrupted Skill ability as well as the Paper Press, which you need to craft paper in your base. If we open up the map, you will be able to find this dude at the Forgotten Cemetery, which is also in the very center of the Farbay Woods, a little bit south of the Bandit Stronghold. On 35, we also have Polora the Feywalker, and after you've taken her down, you will unlock the Spectral Wolf ability, as well as different structures for your base. Garden foundations, large growing pots, which you can use to produce more plants, as well as the growing pot collection. Then also the minor garlic resistance brew, which is going to come in very handy if you start exploring the Dunley farmlands. She can be found in the Gleaming Meadows, the very northwestern part of the map. On the very opposite side of the map, we have the Ferocious Bear, which unlocks the bear form. This one can come in very handy if you want to break into the bandit stronghold, but also destroy those bigger piles of rocks and other minerals. Also unlocks the fur rugs, but if you want to track him down, you want to go all the way to the east, to the bear cave right here. Moving on to the second act, we first have to deal with Quincy the Bandit King before we can progress to the next zone, because this guy unlocks some pretty important structures. First off, the Merciless Charge, an ultimate ability which could come in very handy for PvP early game, while he also has the Smithy and the Tailoring Bench. So then, of course, you can start crafting iron items with the Iron Ingot Blueprint and also Hollow Fang Battle Gear, so the armor which you can start making in the Dunley Farmlands. This guy can be found in the Bandit Stronghold, so if you want to take him down, you first have to deal with the bear. Moving into Act 2, the Dunley Farmlands. The first boss we have to take down is Beatrice the Tailor. She's not really a boss, she's just a granny. Very awesome one to deal with, in my opinion. But uh, she has some pretty interesting blueprints as well. The loom, so you can start crafting cloth in the base. Assortment of curtains, nothing too fancy. Hunter's cloak, with some basic resistances and HP. The cloth blueprint, as well as cotton yarn. So you can start making that armor, which we talked about earlier. And she can be found in the Dawnbreak village. One of the first villages you come across when you enter the Dunley farmlands, and also right in between the two vampire weight gates to the east. She used to give us access to the human form, which now moves on to a different boss, which we're going to talk about in a second. First, on level 44, we have Christina the Sand Priestess. She unlocks the Blood Fountain ability, as well as the Wool Thread recipe, which you're going to need for more crafting, while she can also be found roaming around, very close to the Haunted Iron Mine, in basically the center of the map. I think she is walking from the Moswick Village all the way to the Dawnbreak Village, so she can basically be found on this entire road. Nice, we finally get to some bosses which recently got added with the Secrets of Gloomrot update. So maybe the information which I already gave you might be something you already knew. But uh, next up we have Krieg the Undead, unlocks the Ward of the Damned ability, as well as Reaper Blueprints. So right now you have to deal with this guy to craft the new type of weapons, as well as the Skeleton Priest for your base. Krieg can be located in the Haunted Iron Mine. Sometimes he will be wandering around in the iron mine, while most of the times you will come across him in his main hall at the very end of it. Also on level 44, we have Tristran, the vampire hunter. Many of you guys are familiar with this dude. Can be pretty scary, as he does roam around in the Farbane woods. He unlocks the Veil of Frost ability. A blood hunger ability, so you can see blood quality of enemies, very important. Greater blood essence, but also the ability to craft great swords, which I really, really like in this game right now. But um, this one is also a little problem, as he is roaming around, I think, in the entire Farbane woods. Then we have Vincent, the Frostbringer. I really don't like this guy as man he just keeps freezing you but uh, he unlocks the frost barrier can be pretty useful for pvp also two structures the prison cell and prison framework so you can start capturing humans to suck their blood as well as the reinforced plank which are going to need a lot to craft higher level weapons and also structures for your base 
I usually see him popping up at the militia encampment, but I think after a certain amount of time, he starts roaming around. And this can happen in this entire area. So central in the map, that's where you will find your chill buddy. On level 47, we have three new V-Blood bosses. The first one is Leandra, the Shadow Priestess. She unlocks the Death Knight ability, also the artisan table to craft yourself some necklaces. Also the Scorchstone Pendant Blueprint, Scorchstone, so you can start making those, as well as the Dusk Collar. And boy oh boy, this is a fantastic item. We're gonna talk more about it soon, but um, for this boss, you basically wanna make your way to the Church of the Damned, very close to the Gloomrot border in the northeast. Next up we have Grethel, the glass blower, and this is one of the new bosses who unlocks the cyclone ability, the first storm spell you get your hands on, also glass as items, empty glass bottles and a blood rose potion. She can be found in the Quartz Quarry, in the very northwestern part of the map which basically borders with the Silverlight Hills and the Gloomrot area. Then we have Bane the Shadow Blade. I really like this guy. So um, he unlocks the Veil of Bones spell, Vampire Power Human Form, so you can start trading with the Dunley Farmer's Market and also a small coin purse, so you can carry even more coin with you in a separate inventory, as well as the Slasher's weapons. So now you have to take out this dude before you can craft this new weapon type. You can find him roaming around in the entire map once again. And the funny thing is, you're gonna have to search for him. Easy tip, just activate your V-Blood tracking. It's gonna make this one so much easier. Finally, on 47, we have Maya, the Dark Savant. She unlocks the Veil of Illusion ability, as well as the Study, so you can unlock blueprints in your base, with of course also the scrolls, which can be produced at the paper press. If we open up the map, a new zone was basically added, or well, that is what I think. This one is called the Forbidden Tower, which you can find in the northeastern part of the map, pretty close to the Colosseum, if you are already familiar with that one. On level 50, we have two more bosses, which we are already familiar with. Meredith, the Bright Archer, which unlocks the Veil of Storm ability, as well as the Holy Resistance Potion. She can also be found inside the Haunted Iron Mine, sometimes fighting with Krieg, the Undead General. Wow, a lot of talking. Next up we have Terra, the Geomaster. She unlocks the Spectral Guardian Ultimate, which is pretty good. Also the Gem Cutting Table, which you're gonna need to make yourself your first gems. Also the Siege Golem Stone, so you can place this one at an enemy base to start raiding, as well as regular gems. She can be found at the Bedrock Pass, which is right above the northwestern Vampire Waygate. Also to the west of the Iron Cave, which you should definitely check out if the Haunted Iron Mine is oversaturated on your server. A fantastic place to get a lot of iron. We have a lot more bosses, and some of them are revamped a little bit as well. First off, Frostmaw, the Mountain Terror. This guy, oh, pretty tricky. Unlocks a new ability, the Ice Nova, but also medium bags, so you can further increase your carrying capacity. This one cannot be found in the Dunley Farmlands, but south of the Hallowed Mountains, basically roaming around these parts. I think it's literally making a circle, exactly like so. Next up, we have Raziel, the Shepherd, also a pretty important character right now to craft shattered and legendary weapons. First and foremost, the Crimson Beam ability, a blood kamehameha to hit like a truck and heal yourself while you're at it. I think it's a pretty cool one. The Jewel Crafting Table, as well as the Essential Forge, so you can start making these shattered or legendary items you sometimes find when you take out V-Blood bosses. For this, you're gonna need some special items though, which I cover in another video. Can be found in the top right of the screen, but this guy can be found in the Denley Monastery, central western part of the map basically and very close to him you can also come across jade the vampire hunter she unlocks the ultimate chaos barrage but also the primal blood essence blueprint as well as the ability to craft pistols i really like this new weapon type while it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to find her without tracking i think she also roams in the entire farbane woods 
Final dude on 57 is Octavian, the militia captain. This guy can hit like a truck, so definitely be ready for him while he also is the key to the next zones because you will unlock the Dawthorn Regalia or new armor with him if you take him down as well as the White Castle entrance, but also Raging Tempest, pretty nice new ability. And he can be found in the Bastion of Dunley, a little bit to the west of the Colosseum or exactly north of the Northeastern Vampire Waygate and of course the Dunley Farmlands. My full quick progression guide to get the best weapons and armor in the game can be found at the top right of the screen. Moving on to level 60, we finally get to slaughter some Gloomrod bosses. First off, Ziva the Engineer. Unlocks the ball lightning ability. My brother absolutely loves this one. Also unlocks the fabricator, which you're gonna need for many different endgame items. Also the empty canisters. Ziva can be found inside the Transcendum Machine Factory, on the opposite side of the Spider Cave, towards the east. Also a very important character for this zone, Agram the Purifier. This one unlocks the Chaos Barrier ability, but also different recipes. The Mutated Rat, Major Explosive Box, Radium Alloys, and Irradiant Gruel, which you can use to basically increase your V-Blood quality of characters in your base. Engram can be found at the Pools of Rebirth, pretty nasty dude with a lot of chaos damage. While we also have Domina, the Blade Dancer at level 60, with the Polarity Shift ability. While she also unlocks the Castle Teleporter structure, so you can link teleporters to each other. I think that one is pretty interesting. And she can be found a little bit to the south of the Pools of Rebirth in the Rustlock Village. Then we get to see some of the Cursed Forest once again. We are already familiar with Ungora, the Spider Queen. On level 62, this one unlocks the Volatile Arachnid, one of my favorite abilities to quickly nuke down V-Blood bosses, while she also gives you access to Silk and Spiderlings, so you can start making Silkworms in your base. If we open up the map, she can be found in the Spider Cave, which used to be in the central northern part of the map. Right now, though, it's in the west. We also have the Old Wanderer, a new boss which unlocks the Shroud of the Forest. Pretty important item if you want to make exploration not a pain in the butt in the Cursed Forest. I mean, you otherwise have this fog around you, so you easily get lost. Old Wanderer is not very scary, he just runs away. Be careful to not aggro the entire forest. I think he roams around in a circle following the road exactly like so. Might be slightly different, but you will probably come across him very quickly if you track him down in the center. While on 64 and 65 we have even more Cursed Forest bosses. First, the Duke of Balaton. This one unlocks the Toad form, which I never use. Maybe it could be nice to jump over cheap walls basically of bases, but also unlocks the medium coin purse and coining. So you can start printing your own money. Isn't that fantastic? Inflation for the win, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, this one can be found in the northern part of the map, Swamp of Greed. Next up we have Wilfred, the werewolf chief, and this one can also have a different name if it's nighttime because, you know, he's a werewolf, but um, he has the hard strike ultimate ability, pretty nice one, can deal a lot of damage, also the silver resistance potion, which you're gonna need a lot if you wanna spend them coins at the merchants. If we open up the map, this one can be found a little bit to the south of the cursed forest, inside the Gracefall village. And finally, on 64, we have Falrod, the Soul Taker. Pretty scary name. We also get the Mistrance when we take him down. A new recipe for a cape, the Phantom's Veil, so you can have more resistances and more maximum HP. While he also unlocks the Banshee, so you can make these at the base for Grave Dust, Scourge Stone, and Spectral Dust. If we open up the map, he can be found at the Ancient Village, right next to the only Vampire Waygate in the eastern part of this area. Moving on to Act 3, right before we do so, we first have to deal with Cyril, the Curse Smith at level 65. He unlocks the Wraith Spear ability, but also the Anvil, so you can start crafting dark silver weapons, and also the Spectral Dust, which you're gonna need a lot for the endgame. This guy can be found inside the Cursed Village, in the central part of the map, basically, right next to the Lurker Dwelling. Okido, Act 3. Again, a new boss, Sir Magnus the Overseer. This guy at level 66 
gives you the ice block ability, but also the ability to craft dark silver ingots at the furnace. This dude can be found in the Silver Light Hill, so you want to make your way to the eastern part of the map, specifically the Sacred Silver Mine. You won't be able to enter it via the main gate anymore, instead you want to go through the side, just walk all the way up, follow the river, and then go in via the right side of the cave right here, and if you go all the way down, you will find a sort of courtyard where you can finish him off, and after that you can also use an item to open up the main gate. On level 70, we have a couple more bosses, some of them familiar. First, Morian the Stormwing Matriarch gives you the Void ability, as well as the ability to craft flawless gems. She can be found in the Harpy Nest to the south, so you don't want to go to the one in the north. Who knows, she suddenly pops up in the north, but from my experience, she can always be found in the southern nest. Then we also have Baron du Bouchon de Sommelier. Fantastic name. This guy is hilarious. He also unlocks the Sanguine Call, probably one of my favorite abilities in the game, both for solo play and co-op, as the heals are real. Pretty nice projectiles, while he also gives you access to the Barrel Disguise. I think this one is going to come in handy and pretty interesting for different situations. While well, now you can also make Blood Merlots, which are going to be pretty important for the end game and making your blood qualities better. Also the Blood Merlot Amulets. This guy can be found a little bit to the east of Brighthaven. You want to go to the Brighthaven Vineyards. And this is where you also have to get your hands on sacred grapes to make the Merlots. Merlot, it's a wine, ladies and gentlemen. Know your wines. No, but let's move on to the next boss. Merwin the Elementalist. This one unlocks the Crystal Lance ability. Can be pretty annoying if you're undergeared. Hits like a truck with all that magic. Also the Holy Resistant Flask blueprint as well as greater jewels so this is where jewel crafting becomes very interesting and then you can also start hunting down enemies who are protected by the light first though we want to take her down at the amber leaf grove but once we've done that you can move on to level 74 and this is where you will have azariel the sunbringer you will unlock the Power Search ability once you've struck him down. Also the gold ingot crafting in the furnace. Also the large coin purse, so you can take your printed money and give it to everyone for even more inflation. Awesome! This one can be found at the Brighthaven Cathedral, the northwest of Brighthaven, the big village in the Silverlight Hills. Then we also have Terror Claw, the ogre, unlocks the Arctic Leap ultimate ability. This guy stunlocks you, be careful for him, while he also gives you the large bags blueprint. But um, for this guy, you don't want to go to the Silverlight Hills, but instead to the frozen cave in this little frosty biome. Then we also have Henry Blackbrew, the Doctor, which unlocks the Discharge ability. One of the new storm spells, while he also gives you access to the Athenaeum, so you can further unlock new blueprints inside your base, with of course also the schematic blueprint to produce more paper at the paper press. I'm almost certain that this guy can be found in the Transcendum Laboratories, while he can also be at the Transcendum Power Plant. 99% certain though is gonna be right here. While you also wanna visit the Transcendum Power Plant, as this is where you will find a new V-Blood boss, Voltasha the Power Master, who unlocks the Lightning Curtain ability, but also the ability to craft Power Cores and EMPs. Power cores are very important for late game crafting, get your hands on legendary weapons, while the EMPs are necessary for one of the shard bosses, inside also the Gloomrot area. Then we have two more V-Blood bosses who are not shard bearers. The first one is Night Marshal Sticks, the Sunderer at level 79. Pretty awesome boss, if you ask me. Unlocks the Soul Burn ability. Nice one as well. The Bat Form. So you can finally start using those quick travels in caves. Once again, my video with all the locations can be found in the top right of the screen. But also the ability to craft Onyx Tears. So these are key ingredients produced at the Anvil to make those Shattered or Legendary weapons. I think he also roams these parts, just like the guy which gives you the cape ability. And wow, we just got a blood moon. I'm gonna miss this one. But uh, next up we have Solarus, 
the Immaculate. <laughs> Solaris the Immaculate is the final boss basically for your storyline in for you Rising. As after you've taken him down, your quest line or prompt with all the different things you have to do in the game to further progress will go away. He only unlocks the Summon Fallen Angel spell. No longer gives you a shard or whatever. While I think it's still a very fun fight. And this guy can also be found in the Silverlight Hills at the Fortress of Light. We've talked about all the different V-Blood bosses in the game. There are many of them. If you guys count it, be sure to leave a comment. Love to hear how many there are. I lost count literally. But then we have three more shard bearers or final bosses, if you will, to unlock the shards to make yourself even more powerful with buffs, which last for like two hours. The first one is Gore Crusher, the Behemoth. Also unlocks a new ability, the Wisp Dance. And this one can be found in the Cursed Forest if you visit the Lair of the Behemoth. I'm going to show you guys a trick how you can find these a little bit easier in a second. But let's move on to the next one, the Winged Horror. This one unlocks the Frost Vortex ability. It can be found in the southeastern part of the map, in the Farbane Woods, at the Dreaded Peak. You can only visit this place if you have the bad form from Styx the Marshal. But yeah, you've probably already taken him down once you decide to go for the shard bearers. And then we also have a new one, Adam the Firstborn. I thought this was a pretty challenging fight. Probably one of the most difficult bosses as of right now. Very happy that they added a true challenge to the game. He also unlocks a pretty epic ability, which I'm going to show you guys in a second, because I use it all the time right now. I think it's nice for both PvE and PvP. But this guy has Eye of the Storm. Knock back nearby enemies. You will have lightning strikes all over the place. This guy can be found in the northern part of Gloomrot, for which you're also going to need EMPs. Just place the EMPs on the floor, shoot them with a sanguine coil or whatever. It will explode, the gates will open, and then you will enter the Doctor's Black Bruce Castle. This is where you will find Adam. And yes, let's move on to the ability. So if you use this ultimate, you can summon a lot of lightning. And all this will also knock back enemies, deal quite some damage, so I think it might be pretty interesting for PvP. Woo, ladies and gentlemen, we are there. All the different bosses. Thank you so much for sticking around till the end. I hope this video covers everything you wanted to know. How you can get to their locations, or well, some of them, as most are pretty accessible. But um, I killed all the V-Blood bosses, got my hands on all the shards, which, of course, you can see if you place an Eye of Twilight in your base. So if we interact with this one, you can see that right now we have a Soul Shard of the monster in the north where you can take out Adam. Soul Shard of the Behemoth, the Soul Shard of the Winged Horror, and of course all the people who've been playing on the Early Access or Preview version of this update also have quite some of these. I think we currently have four of them. But um, ladies and gentlemen, that was it for today. A big thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you found this video helpful. And of course, if you have questions, suggestions for future videos related to V Rising or anything else, leave them in the comments down below. I'm always happy to help. Right now, though, I want to wish you an awesome day. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and grab a discount for your V Rising server at the top right of the screen. Cheers.